welcome, it's Vasco from the Angular University and in this lesson we're going to talk about how to do form validation with model-driven or reactive forms. So stay tuned, it's coming right up. We can define the validation rules of our form controls programmatically at the level of the form control. So the second argument that you pass on to the form control constructor is an array containing a list of validators. And validators are just plain functions. So the previous validators that we saw were required, pattern, max length, etc. We can import those validators from the forms module. Let's see, here we are going to import validators.required. There are others, validators.minLength, maxLength, pattern. All this functionality is available here for configuration. Actually, internally, this code here that performs this validation, this is also called by the set of directives that we have seen before applied directly at the template level, like the required attribute, min length, max length, pattern. Internally, those directives call these validators that we are configuring here. It's the same code. Let's see this in action. If we try this out, we can see that all the validation functionality is working. Mandatory fields are being marked as red if empty and we can only type numbers into the duration field. So this works just like template driven forms. But take for example a more complex case where maybe we would like to add a validation to a certain form field but only in a certain condition depending on the data. Now that's a more advanced use case that actually happens a lot in practice and that we would not be able to do with template-driven form validation. If you enjoyed this tutorial, you can always subscribe to my channel for more upcoming Angular 2 tutorials. Also, have a look at the website of the Angular University to see what type of Angular 2 tutorials you find there that you might like. Actually, everything in principle that you can do with model-driven forms, you can also do with template-driven forms. But in the case of this example, it would probably be much harder. You are probably still thinking, okay, that's great, but why are they called reactive forms? We're going to go into it in the couple of next lessons. So stay tuned.